Ms. Walsh, thank you so much for joining in the Hyperloop. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. Well, thank you. Um, pleasure to be on here. Yep. So as Director of Transportation and Infrastructure Development, you know, what kind of projects do you normally, you know, work with with your team at the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission? So here at the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission, we are the Metropolitan Planning Organization for Central Ohio. Central Ohio is the Columbus, Ohio region. We're a 15-county area. Uh, we work on, uh, my team works on transportation projects, particularly we work on funding projects, uh, large nature like highways, bus projects projects, um, buying actual rolling stock, um, uh, bike trails, uh, about $36 million every single year goes out of this office uh, for federally funded transportation projects, about another $28 million in state funded pro projects, and another million in um, assistance to transit agencies. So it's the full gamut of really local projects. Um, not to mention a number of things we help support, economic development um, interests um, and um, trying to advance longer range plans for the future of Central Ohio. Yeah, and it's that future that, you know, I, I've been watching, uh, you know, your organization present plans uh, for many years now. What are the biggest challenges you face in creating, you know, these future projects like the Rapid Speed Transportation Initiative? Um, and then sharing like the results. As a metropolitan planning organization um, in, for the one for Central Ohio, uh, we do something known as a 20-year long-range metropolitan transportation plan. Through that effort, every four years we update that. I have come across multiple times in updating this that our community says, we want to make that connection to another region. We don't have passenger rail. And so that connection to Cincinnati or Chicago or Cleveland has never really been realized for Central Ohio. Not like maybe, you know, Cleveland, they do have uh, um, passenger rail that connects them to Chicago or Cincinnati can, you know, they have um, uh, passenger rail service. We don't even have that. And so that's probably one of those big outcries that comes from our long range planning. Um, so back in 2013, we looked at the feasibility of passenger rail. Um, and then as we evolved that project forward, we saw this new technology hyperloop come out and we submitted a proposal uh, to a, a global competition. Um, and we came out as one of the top 10 corridors that they wanted to pursue in the world, uh, connecting uh, Chicago, Columbus, and Pittsburgh. And so it's kind of evolved from that. We've been doing some studies around that, our rapid speed transportation initiative, where we actually look at passenger rail and the feasibility of Hyperloop next to each other to kind of help determine a path forward for our region. It's really nice to see both considered in one report, actually. I I very rarely see that. Um, it's either one or the other. <laughs> um, right. So what got you interested in, in working at the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission or regional planning for that, transportation planning for that matter? So um, I, I started out like in college just looking at public administration. Um, honestly, I, I was a little TBD <laughs> for a little while and then found public administration, got really excited about it, then found planning. Um, my very first job was a transportation planner in a region um, to the west of Columbus, Ohio, known as Springfield, Ohio. Um, and um, I evolved that and actually ended up coming to work for the state in economic development um, from a passenger rail proposal, my, my connections from a passenger rail proposal going through Springfield at the time and making connections with people at the state and wanting to be a part of that. Um, and so really my passion around connecting regions has got me over here to Columbus working for the state and then ultimately landed me the job at Morpsey. Um, and so I'd have to say my personal interest, but also we have an amazing executive director, William Murdoch, and um, being able to work with um, such a, a great spirit and somebody who really wants to do good for the community and the passion of our organization, all the team members here, um, that's what really keeps me going and being, wanting to be a part of this team. Uh, that's really cool. That's so uh, interesting how you wanted to connect cities and then that kind of led to uh, your your future career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, so speaking of connecting cities, 
Um, your report does mention Chicago, Columbus, Columbus, Pittsburgh. If you had the choice, <laughs> which route would you rather have? <laughs> I, you know, I, that full connection is really important. That connection to Pittsburgh all the way through to Chicago, that would connect this greater mega region of the United States. This is the largest mega region in the United States, the Great Lakes mega region. Uh, um, and that's taking multiple major city regions and putting them together. The Midwest is a force to be reckoned with as an economy, um, as a group of people, we're, we're the biggest. And uh, this would make the connection across all of, of that land and all those communities. The other thing that would happen with this is connecting Chicago all the way to Pittsburgh. And then the idea that, you know, um, folks in, in Pennsylvania are actually looking at a connection across the turnpike from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia Um uh, our consultant, AECOM, has actually looked at the connection between New York all the way to Chicago via this route. So that really our start on this corridor has led to this greater conversation of basically East Coast to, to Middle America. And how amazing is that? Like that, that would be a completely new connection to be realized on the ground that we don't have today. Yeah, that, that would be amazing. And it all without airplane travel <laughs> and it's just right but at the yeah. same speed right <laughs> at the same speed so That's yeah crazy. it's it, it would be truly um a new world for us yeah so um speaking from the general public's perspective um how can the public appreciate and learn from studies like the rapid speed transportation initiative what would what kind of advice would you have um, for just the general public to in reading these studies so I think people get really excited about new technology. We're working, um, as you may know, Smart Columbus, uh, and Columbus uh, won a, a major award with um, uh, Smart Transportation at the USDOT in the last four years. And so we've been involved with a number of forward-thinking projects here in Central Ohio. Um, and I think when people hear that, they think, oh, well, smart is, is here, right? I've got it on an app on my phone and we're just going to connect and things going to be instant and we're going to be flying in cars and we're going to be zooming over to Chicago in two years or something. Well, you know, I'm working on, on our long range plan that goes out 20, 30 years right now. There are highway projects we're not going to see realized due to the financial constraints for another 20 or 30 years. So I think being patient and understanding these things just don't happen overnight. And that in order to make a difference for our future, you have to start planning today. Um, so you don't just flip a light switch and realize, uh, you know, an interstate highway system, <laughs> you know, and the same is true for any mode of transportation. So these things uh, take a lot of evolution. And the idea that Hyperloop will be something that becomes, you know, if we do get something off the ground here in central Ohio, and I'm very positive that we will be able to do that, um, it will most likely be a re local regional system, and then it'll evolve to that major um, mega region type system that connects the Chicago to us, and then maybe the Pittsburgh to us, and then so on. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, this happened in my lifetime. Well, you know, a portion of it very well may, um, but keep in mind this is about forward thinking and the idea that we will improve on service uh, over the progression of a project like this, and it's not going to be instantaneous. That's, that's really good advice. <laughs> um, and, you know, what would you recommend um, now to other planners or other regional study makers um, you know, when they're looking at rapid speed technology or even the environmental like NEPA or feasibility studies? Um. Well, I think most of them, like myself, mo most other planners understand that these things take time, but don't be afraid to dare to dream. Also, I think for us having working with Virgin Hyperloop One, having a company that has a live technology that you can go t touch, see, smell, right, uh, was really important. Be able to take your local officials and say, this is real and show it to them is really important. Um, concepts are best sold whenever someone can see them, right? 
Um, so visualization is key. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Walsh. I really appreciated uh, you taking the time out uh, to have this uh, brief interview. Well, that was super easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can interview me anytime. No problem. <laughs> well, thanks so much. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye-bye.